Oh, today I'm all black. Ooh, rocking like K-pop celebrity, Jenny. What's up? <laughs> All right, I'm just kidding. Welcome back to my channel. This is Bonnie with Bye Bonnie Jewel, where I talk about all things diamonds. This episode is gonna be cushion, cushion, cushion. Cushion cut diamonds are, I don't know, just been around forever. There's many different kinds, which I talk about in different videos. So just quickly brush over it. There's like old mine, brilliant, cushion, brilliant, crush ice, brilliant. Uh, there are all different kinds of names. So if I show you two two carat or three carat cushion diamonds of all the same spec, let's say they're all two carat FVS2, every single one of them is gonna be different. So it's very important it, when you're inquiring about a cushion cut diamond, it's very important to actually screenshot the exact type of look that you're looking for. So today we're gonna be featuring a three carat uh, lab grown cushion cut diamond. And the reason why I need to kind of address this in this video because because a lot of people have been kind of screenshotting the perfect uh, cushion cut diamonds and lab grown and wanting it in natural diamond. I just want to tell you guys quickly that there is a lot of material to cut in lab grown diamond to kind of perfect that cushion brilliant. Just so you guys know that cushion brilliance in natural diamond is actually a very rare cut. And that's because the cutter, whenever you have a piece of rough, they actually lose a lot of rough in order to get to that cushion brilliant cut versus if you were to cut crush ice cushion, uh, generally those stones are deeper. So you, you get a face up larger diamond if you're gonna compare a cushion, uh, more of a crush ice look versus a brilliant. And of course, every single stone is gonna be a little different. So I can't say that it's a rule of thumb for all, but cushion brilliant exists and definitely way less in natural versus in lab grown. So just keep in mind that if you're looking for a cushion brilliant in natural, you're gonna get a very 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 few uh, options and most likely they're gonna have a premium over crush ice cushion because they show larger face up okay now that I've addressed that let's talk about the shape of the cushion cut a little bit okay they vary so much but in this particular project the client reached out to me she said you know what Barney I started with a small Tiffany and Co ring you know at the time it was just that's what you do. You walk into Tiffany and buy a ring. And now after, you know, X amount of years with kids, I'm, I'm ready for that big upgrade. I'm ready for that dream ring. And for me, cushion cut, it, it, it's always stood out to me and lab grown fits, you know, what I want to spend. So I said, okay, perfect. Let's think put together something she really loved the halo look and as you guys might know halo rings are different than hidden halo so hidden halo you're talking about a wire that's wrapped uh, on the side of the diamond or full diamond basket which I've done before so definitely go check out the full diamond basket version here for this one she wanted an actual halo so it's important for you when you do research about wanting your perfect cushion engagement ring not only do you need screenshot of the what the shape is gonna look like if you are going for that halo look you kind of need to know the diamond size or the scale the look that you want so what i mean is how big are the diamonds going to be on the actual halo and how thick or wide you want the diamonds on the band to be because that's going to drastically change the look and when she came to me she's petite you know and she's about maybe a little smaller than me i would say and her finger was smaller than me for sure and i'm a five and a half i think she was like three and a half. If you should look at the try on videos here, I, I don't think it even fills over my knuckle. So it's important to know the scale of it. Um, if you want it, like say, if you end up going with a smaller, whether it be natural or lab grown diamond and a thicker halo, and then, you know, adjusting the band accordingly is gonna be important. So because she's going so large on the diamond, I say you don't need a thick halo. You really want something that's gonna accentuate the shape of the cushion, okay? And she told me she really wanted that pillowy that perfect slightly that's not square square you know you've ever seen cushion cut halo rings where it kind of looks like a princess cut where it's like kind of square she did not want that she really wanted some the diamond shape to be more like pillowy and then we created the perfect custom setting that's gonna uh that actually even made it more pillowy and she of course the end result i love that ring because i started out 
with a cushion cut myself so and i also had a halo myself so um i'm actually getting my ring redone um that's gonna become like a right hand ring so i'm really excited to show you guys that i'm turning it into kind of like a chunky gold look with a halo uh, because now i'm definitely wearing more gold these days and so for going back to this particular ring because of the size of her uh body and the shape and the length of her finger i decided okay you know what we're gonna do she she didn't want a thick band but i didn't want to go any lower than two millimeter because this was she's a mom you know she pushed the stroller she does things with her hands so we said okay in order to kind of keep it like still delicate not too large we need to go like two plus millimeters so that's kind of what we did in this uh particular ring i know we talk about you pave french pave we, we did you pave a lot of you are like wondering okay what's the difference between you and french honestly from top if it's our craftsmanship it's definitely going to be perfect no matter what for this type of look it's just really personal preference is one going to shine more than the other the answer is definitely no uh, they both have the same type of shine. It's more so the proportions of the diamonds of the layout of the halo against the ring. We didn't want a super skinny halo, but we didn't want a super thick halo either. We kind of went like in the medium in between. So this is kind of something that she left up to me and thank God, you know, because sometimes I, I, I don't feel like clients really fully understand the design, sometimes the proportions. Sometimes they think this is what they want. And when I look at them, I'm like, well, this doesn't really go with your finger that's something to think about when it comes to halo rings and then also the shape of the diamond so in cushion cuts there is square cushions and there is also a little bit elongated cushion so in particular this one is like 115 116 ratio so it's actually slightly elongated not so long in the over 120 usually over 120 uh, it becomes longer uh, definitely longer than you know anything that's like 110 so uh, it depends on what you like I feel like how much finger coverage you want to go um, crush ice versus not I think that is again very personal I've made both ring uh, face up they're just different one has more dancing crazy sparkle and the other one kind of has the sparkle that mimics more of like the larger facets like round this is something to think about when you're shopping for a cushion cut engagement ring okay so I hope you guys enjoy this cushion cut breakdown video if you like cushion cuts or want me to do other uh, halo ring videos I think I've done like radiant cuts round cuts pear shape i can definitely cue more of those videos in uh in the future episodes for you guys to enjoy all right thank you so much make sure you follow me on social media at by bonnie jewelry and don't forget to follow me on instagram okay i'll see you guys in my next video bye